Section twenty eight of Poetry of South Africa. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Missionary's Last Farewell to England. Reverend H. H. Dugmore, English Channel, October ninth, eighteen fifty nine. Read for LibriVox.org by Doreen land of my birth farewell thy shores are fading in the dark distance and the ocean's waves are hiding thee from view while sadly aiding to dim my vision of thy snowy cliffs my tears unbidden start o oh, happy land i did not know how much i loved thee till the breezes bore me from thee and i gazed a long last look i left thee when a child and Afric's summer suns full forty years have burned upon my head since in thy groves my boyish footsteps wandered but my heart was yet unwithered and could quiver still when sounded on my ear thy name of glory while oceans rolled between us in my dreams my thoughts were of thee but in waking hours I scarcely dare to hope to see thee more. I lingered o'er the story of thy fame, and joyed to claim thee as my native isle. A day star to the nations that would fain follow, though from afar thy track of light, and in its beams find their own way to freedom. In the far solitudes of regions dark, with heathen gloom, my pensive soul has mused and i have signed to sun me in the light which long has been thy halo light from heaven amidst the brightness of whose gladdening rays thy temples halls and palaces have stood irradiate but it might not could not be i length i saw thee once again and then how thrilled my very heart core as thy coasts loomed through the mist of morning on my view and thy proud vision of historic glory marched its dioramic grandeur past i leap upon thy freedom soil once more thy fields were laughing clad with springtide flowers thy green woods waving in the fresh wind's breath thy streams bounding from winter's cold embrace threaded the veils with silver while i stood and gazed with rapture fresh and pure as boyhood's in wildering ecstasy and then i swept on steam wings o'er thy plains and round thy hills and down thy vales mons beauty ever changing now looking on the cornfields waving gladness now drinking fragrance from the hayfield's breath now wandering like a child as ivied towers and slender church spires from their sheltering groves pointing to heaven and all the baronial halls standing apart amidst their dark woods pride and crumbling castle keeps that tell of times when warders blew their horns and mailed knights broke spears and shattered helms in tournament as these and thousand more went sailing by till plunged at last amidst the whelming tide of thy great city's life i sank a drop into its vast and restless ocean whirl but is it so and have i really trod thy soil again or did i only dream methought i mingled with thy multitudes and saw the swarms of thy industrial hives plying their ceaseless task on piling stores to meet the wide world's wants methought i saw thy quickened lifeblood of commercial being pour through its iron veins the vital stream infusing universal energy did not thy glorious structures rise before me houses of mercy halls and kingly courts did not imperial windstore glad my eyes where england's banner free and proud was waving 
brother-like greeting the free winds of heaven did i not wander through the gorgeous halls where england senators in trumpet tones have poured forth eloquence that all the world where mildly ruling sits a mother queen her real throne a nation's loving heart have i not stood within thy sacred fanes listening entranced as billowing music rolled and distant broke upon the sculptured stone like ocean's waves upon their rocky bounds and tenderer dearer recollection still my mother's and my childhood's humble home with childhood's memories clustering thick around it did i not stand again upon its threshold and greet my childhood's playmates ah uh, how changed where was all this a dream a happy dream that rose in brightness and then passed away for ever no it was not a dream the welcome of warm hearts was real and then the glow of friendships formed was no illusion men great and good have spoken sacred truth and i have listened with enraptured ears as eloquence of heaven's own kindly burst in burning power from consecrated lips and i have seen the church's standard bearers men crowned in hoary age with sober glory have blessed me in the master's sacred name and bidden me god speed in god's great service and i have mingled with the throngs that sent up to high heaven their swelling songs of praise that as the voice of many waters rose exultant from the lips and hearts of thousands when the glad tidings came that god was raised up from his holy habitation and was pouring forth his spirit on the nations i did not dream when i beheld the light of holy rapture beam from a thousand eyes i was not dreaming when i shared the glow of wandering gratitude with thousand hearts and when our hallelujah rent the skies and our rapt spirits felt the bliss of heaven descend to meet us in the golden cloud of god's own presence twas a glorious truth a joy to feed the soul upon for ever and yet tis like a dream for scarcely seen thy beauties fade from view and the rich notes that thrill the soul to rapture thrill no more twas but a glimpse of glory and tis gone twas but a taste of joy that left the soul hungering with keener appetite i go just as my spirit is awaking quick with new strange life and feeling just awakens fresh the home throb of my heart owning its english birth well be it so tis god that bids me go tis duty calls back to the land of darkness be it so tis well that i should go ere silken webs woven by christian kindness round my heart become too strong to leave me power to rend them i go to look upon thee never more i go but breathing prayers and blessings on thee o england speck amidst the world of waters thou art the world's great wonder realms afar have heard thy voice have seen thy light have felt thy power some jealous envy thee some bless thy name the might of freedom and the light of truth the freedom that can burst the spirit's bonds the light that leads that spirit up to heaven these are thy charge and for the wide world's will be faithful to thy trust thou honoured isle thou hast a glorious mission to the nations hold fast the truth of god with a strong right hand cast forth the traitors that would take thy crown still send thy sons as mercy's angels forth to sound in silver tones to far-off lands the trumpet of the everlasting gospel so shall heaven's smile be thy perpetual light and heaven's dread power a wall of fire thy guard and now tis past 
nor faintest trace remains of headland cliff or mountain in the line of the far-off horizon and in vain i strain my aching sight to catch one glimpse but one glimpse more england farewell island of beauty changing not with seasons island of glory dimming not with years isle rich in blessing strewn by god's own hand my native isle a fond long last farewell End of section 28「A Reminiscence of 1820 」by Rev. H. H. Dugmore In the lone wilderness behold them stand, gazing with new strange feelings on the scenes now spread around them in a foreign clime, far from the sea-girt home that gave them birth. They had been landed on a cheerless shore, dreary and solitary, and the hope that erst had brightened all their visions when o'er the blue waters looming from afar they had seen Africa's mountains rise to view had nigh been quenched again but they had left the barren strand and over hill and dell had slowly toiled to reach a place of rest and give their children once again a home men roughly kind of speech and manners strange had guided them and bidding them farewell had left them houseless in the wilderness pitying and wondering what their fate might be fathers and mothers with their children round them stand on the green sward while the sunny skies flecked with bright clouds bend o'er them from above and thoughts are far away o'er the wide waters the parting scene comes back to memory's view the last embrace of loved ones left behind the fears and hopes and prayers of that sad hour and now the little ones in thoughtless glee chase the bright butterflies of this strange land their new and untried home ah twas for them the fathers braved the storm-tossed waters and the mothers hushed their own alarms to peace when the loud tempest howled around the bark that bore them onward o'er the surging waves these gave the springs to their great enterprise and broke the bonds that else had held them still in the old home circle of the fatherland dark days had been in england darker still seemed coming fast and o'er the crowded throngs of britain's cities stern adversity was frowning then the cry arose what of our children what awaits them here must we look on and see their budding life before it blossoms wither in our sight are there not other lands where pining want shall cease to mock at honest industry that asks but leave to labor will no star of hope arise to point to happier climes where skies are not all dark be it to rend the ties of kindred we must venture forth over the unknown seas and seek a home on foreign shores where there is room to live and light to see a future for our children happy and bright when we have sunk to rest and this is now their home tis lone and wild but there is beauty in its wildness see yonder are mountains in their deep ravines dark woods are waving whence in noisy flight wild parrots issue forth while loonies hide amidst their deep recesses water springs send limpid streamlets down the mountainside fringed with bright evergreens and brighter flowers issuing from yonder dark and craggy gorge where lurks the stealthy leopard and where shouts with loudly echoing voice the old baboon cariga winds its devious course along between its willowed banks while here and there the dark-leaved yellow wood lifts its proud head in stately dignity along the vale the wildwood sheltering covert stretches where the bushbuck barks and the deeker sudden springs the timid bluebuck through the moonlight glides and monkey mimics chatter saucily and there are feathered songsters in the groves not with the thrushes or the blackbird's notes that flood old england's wood with melody but short and sharp and ringing in their tones responsive to each other from afar while tailing of a life of light and joy in the spring pastures on the sunny slopes where the mimosa's golden blossoms shed gales of perfume around 
and fertile soils promise the husbandman a rich return to cheer him in his toil this is our home a spot on earth we now call our own a starting point for a new life's career wake all our energies afresh a brighter day has dawned at last upon us let us raise a song of gratitude to heaven and gird us for our duties in the poem this recording is in the public domain past and present read for librivox by drew conway over the waters wide and deep where the storm waves roll and the storm winds sweep over the waters see them come breasting the billows curling foam fathers for children seeking a home in africa's southern wilds wilderness lands of brake and glen the wolf's and the panther's gloomy den wilderness plays where the spring box bounds and the lion's voice from the hill resounds and the vulture circles in airy rounds are africa's southern wilds hand to the labour heart and hand our son shall inherit an altered land harvest shall wave over the virgin soil cottages stand and the gardens smile and the songs of our children the hours beguile mid africa's southern wilds make we the pride of the forest yield rest from the wilderness field on field and to brighten our hope and lighten our care and gain the aid of our father there raise we to heaven the voice of prayer from africa's southern wilds the locust clouds have darkened heaven the rusted fields to the flame are given the war cries echoing wild and loud for the war of the savage fierce and proud has burst like the storm from the thunder cloud on africa's southern wilds never despair though the harvests fail though the host of a savage foe assail never despair we shall conquer yet and the toils of our earlier years forget in hope's bright glory our sun shall set miss africa's southern wilds our tale-worn fathers are sinking to rest but their children inherit their hopes bequest valleys are smiling in harvest pride they are fleecing flocks on the mountain side cities are rising to stud the plains the life-blood of commerce is coursing the veins of a new-born empire that grows and reigns over africa's southern wilds rev h h dugmore april the tenth eighteen sixty one end of poem this recording is in the public domain a south african wilderness by rev h h dugmore read for librivox dot org by nemo the wilderness the wilderness it stretches wide and drear as i stand amidst its solitudes with no companion near i watch the vulture sailing as he circles in the sky the ostrich stalking o'er the wilds the springbok bounding by the wilderness the wilderness tis where the lion roars and whence the wasting locust flood its living torrent pours with rushing ruin on their wings its myriad myriads sweep like waters from the mountains or the surges of the deep the wilderness the wilderness the desert blast is there and the sun sends down his fiery rays with fierce and blinding glare tis there the infant whirlwinds their newborn vigor try and spiral columns o'er the waste rise circling to the sky there gathering vultures sounding wings swoop on their hapless prey and they clamor round their victim ere life has ebbed away the ring halls rise on his coil at the startled traveller's side the false mirages wavy streams and phantom ripples glide 
strange sounds are in the wilderness the wild dog's plaintive wail as he calls his fellows from afar comes faintly on the gale the vulture's voice screams harshly as he sights his prey on high the bursting meteor echoes from the regions of the sky a thousand insect voices with their thousand notes are there with chirrup ring or buzz of wing they fill the sounding air and waking fancy starts to hear the trumpet's note afar the pebroke's martial gathering by Berrien's cry of war but the wilderness has lessons in danger's lonely hour how weak man's solitary arm how vain his boast of power the humbled spirit learns to look for heaven's protecting care is safety in the wilderness then god is present there the wilderness might wean the heart from earth and earthly love and bid the freed affections soar to happier realms above look now upon this barren waste then turn thy wistful eyes to the fields where flowers immortal bloom beyond the starry skies no scorching sun no withering wind no serpent's tooth is there no vulture sweep of terror no locust cloud of care no faithless mocking phantom streams the longing eyes beguile but living fountains sparkle bright in god's eternal smile end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Sunrise Thought at Cove Rock by Rev. H. H. Dugmore Read for LibriVox.org by J. L. Baldwin King of the Golden Orient, lo, he comes and mounts, magnificent, his burning throne, smiling in glory o'er the world of waters, whose joyous waves leap welcome to his coming. See how the streaming rays, his almoners, fling forth his largesses in flashing brilliance which the waves catch and toss from crest to crest in dancing rapture. Tis a glorious sight to see a king right welcome to his subjects, to hear the voice of gladness universal greeting his royal smile. Not sea alone, but ocean, earth, and sky join look and voice in smile and song. See there, in the far west, where little cloudlets cluster as they hang in modest diffidence upon the outskirts of the vast audience throng, they too are flushing bright with the universal joy and hark breezes are striking their aeolian harps among the woods that wave along the hills while the deep voices of the surge far pealing thunder their ceaseless anthem to his praise brief as befitting is the monarch's audience for who may look upon the king of light with eye unblenching now in massy folds the darkening curtains of his cloud pavilion gather around him and though dazzling still their broad gold fringes wave the weak eye rests from his transpiercing glance of unveiled glory hail glorious image of the king of kings seen or unseen thou givest light and life and joy and beauty to revolving worlds that circle round thy throne centre of power thy mystery of might upholds sustains and governs as the delegate of god their measured harmony of ceaseless motion reigning their fleetness with an arm of strength felt and obeyed in the far depths of space where roll remotest planets round their spheres in twilight solitude unseen unknown end of poem this recording is in the public domain an ocean sunset by rev h h dugmore read for librivox org by kirby wheeland "'Tis sunset on the ocean. Let us gaze. A Sabbath sunset, and all things combine to give it peace and beauty. For the winds have folded their broad pinions, and have sunk to peaceful slumber on the ocean's breast. The sportive waves that tossed their spray erewhile displume their crests in reverence for the hour, and all is calm around." The curtain cloud that hung o'er all the west throws wide its folds, and in the clear blue ether far away, bright islands of the blest seem floating, free from the rough cares that fret this lower world, and radiant in a glory all divine. 
Are not our long-lost loved ones hovering there? Can we not see them wave their hands of light as if to beckon to their bright abodes? Are not celestial harp-strings sounding? Oh, let glad imagination spread her wings and soar to catch the echoes of their songs ere the ethereal vision fades away. Hail to a scene that wakens thoughts like these. Tis sweet to rise, though but on fancy's wing, and antedate communion with the blest. For heaven is real. May its magnet power touch every point of vision, till the soul, drawn by a might resistless, centers there. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Sight from the Shore Read for LibriVox.org by J. L. Baldwin I look upon the ocean. Far away a fleet of thunder-clouds is sailing by. High in mid-heaven the aerial canvas swells, and proudly scorns the breeze's proffered aid. Instinct with its own spirit's breath of life, that bears it onward in its majesty. While ever and anon the signal flash from van and rear and centre tells of might resistless. Stern and slow, and dark and grand, its shadows sweep o'er ocean's heaving billows. While avant couriers on the lightning's wing herald its coming to the distant realms beyond the horizon's verge. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Thunderstorm at Bathurst by the Reverend H. H. Dugmore, read for LibriVox by Sandy Ferrer. Twas eve, but twas not as it oft had been, when the sun, ere he sank from the lovely scene, had smiled in glory o'er mountain dale, and the forest gloom, and the cloudlet pale, and the verdant lawn, and the floweret gay, were tinged with the gold of his parting ray. While sweet was the breath of the scented gale, while the flocks bounded forward along the vale, and the soberer herds from the distant plain were wending towards home in their lengthened train. T'was eve, but there was not the softened hue which the twilight oft o'er the landscape threw. I felt not the breath of the evening breeze, I saw not the wave of the forest trees, I heard not the warbler's vesper song, they had sunk in silence their woods among. But the landscape was wrapped in a thickening gloom, like a funeral pall for a night of doom, for a storm frowned dark from the western sky, and the gloom deepened more as the storm drew nigh. I listened. The music of Eve was stilled, but heavy the distant thunder pealed. I looked, I saw not the sun's bright beam, but there was the lurid lightning's gleam. And they came in fury, the lightning's flash and the wild wind's sweep and the thunder's crash. The fire stream poured on the fear-struck sight, a moment of day, then a deeper night sank black on all, while the forest reeled neath the rushing blast, and the thunder pealed through the echoing heaven. In that dread hour, how puny the arm of a mortal's power! But they passed away, the thunder's crash, and the wild wind's sweep, and the lightning's flash, and the dark cloud's gloom. They rolled afar, while the moon's mild beam and the twinkling star again shed their light o'er the peaceful scene, and the storm was gone, as it ne'er had been. I looked again. The morning beamed, and the golden rays of the bright sun streamed, a richer blue in the ether mild, and a lovelier hue in the flower it smiled. The landscape was vested with softer green, and the dewdrops pure in their silvery sheen were sparkling around in the morning ray, and night had melted in cloudless day. I thought of an hour when round my soul I had heard heaven's justice thunders roll, when dark clouds gathering o'er my head were filling a guilty heart with dread, when I feared each flash of the wrath divine, and tremblingly watched each nearing sign of a righteous anger's rushing power that was making a sin-struck spirit cower. But the storm swept by, the lightning dread left all unscathed my guilty head, and the dark cloud melted as it passed in showers of blessing, while the blast sank to the whisper of mercy's voice, 
that bade the trembling soul rejoice in peace and pardon, light and love. I looked. T'was a starlit heaven above, and bright-eyed angels seemed to gaze in smiling myriads through the rays to watch the sinner's heaving breast and mark how its terrors sank to rest. And then the light of angel eyes melted away in the brightening skies as silent, soothing, gently stole the sense of pardon on the soul. For now t'was God's own smile that beamed, and the rays of his mercy around me streamed. The sun had risen, the night was o'er, the sun had risen to set no more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Morning Wish for a Friend by Rev. H. H. Dugmore Read for LibriVox.org by Kirby Wheatland Darkness retires, and the brightening morn Smiles as he heralds the day newborn. Mists roll away from the mountain's brow, And his head wears a circlet of sunlight now. Night's savage prowlers to caverns glide, As seeking in darkness their deeds to hide, While, mounting majestic his radiant throne, With the glance of a monarch that reigns alone, the sun looks forth from his palace of light, and bids from his presence the gloom of night. Glittering dewdrops reflect his ray, songsters carol on hillock and spray, the woodlands wave to the breeze's breath, the ripple plays light o'er the lake beneath, the flocks from the fold towards the uplands bound, and the echoing hills with their voices sound. Nature unanimous joins to pay, a tribute of joy to the welcome day. But there's a day of a brighter beam, For its light from brighter sun doth stream. Sin and sorrow's dark clouds from its brightness fly, And the soul gains a prospect to worlds on high. Tis a day that dawns from the realms above, Tis illumined by beams of eternal love. Tis a day whose light is the smile of God, Shedding heaven-born peace in the heart abroad. The gloom of grief and the mists of care Melt away in its radiance, While black despair, far chased by the beams of its glory, flies, And leaves to the soul heaven's cloudless skies. Sister, may this bright day be thine, Around thy soul may its sunbeams shine, Be thy path in the light of its brightening ways, And its gladdening glory on all thy ways, Revealing from heaven thy title clear, to mansions of endless glory there. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Night Thought Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo I have seen the meteor's transit light As a moment it gilded the gloom of night I have watched the shower of starlets bright that bespangled its glittering way. But though dazzling the flash of its brilliant beam, it has passed away like a fading dream, and a sadder and deeper gloom would seem to mourn for the meteor's ray. I thought t'was an emblem of pleasure's power, or the mind of man in its mirthful hour. When the clouds of care, or the soul that lower, to its transit ray give room a moment its beams round the spirit play a moment the dazzled spirit is gay a moment the meteor has passed away and there follows a deeper gloom end of poem this recording is in the public domain the little shallow cove rock read for LibriVox by fisker Delicate, fragile, tiny shell, thou hast a wondrous tale to tell. I find thee here on the ocean strand. The billows have borne thee safe to land. Yet those billows have proved the proud ship's grave, and have mocked the power of man to save, as its shattered fragments far and wide were strewn on the shore by the surging tide. But thou art here, and all unharmed. Say, how hast thou its fury charmed? that its mighty waves on their foaming breast should bear thee safe to a place of rest. 
The rock rears high its haughty form and challenges proud the ocean storm, and he tosses the wild waves raging back as his challenge provokes their fierce attack. But again and again and again they come, and vainly the rock resists its doom. The waves are mighty and know their might. Never have we been vanquished in fight. We kiss the sands of the yielding shore. We rend the rock in his pride of power. Be it soon, be it late, thy fate is sealed. Be it soon, be it late, thou shalt surely yield. And it yields at last, with a headlong leap. It buries its shame in the foaming deep. And the waves toss high their plumy spray, as they dance triumphant around their prey. And yet, little shell, I find thee here. And nothing hath wrought thee harm or fear. Though shattered rocks and a wreck-strewn shore Give tokens dire of the ocean's power, Tell me, tiny beautiful thing, Fill me in frail as the butterfly's wing, An infant's finger could crush thee to dust, What hast thou then wherein to trust? And whence thy courage and power to brave The surging might of the wild sea wave? I have not braved the ocean's might, I reared no front with the waves to fight, I yielded me meek to the billow's force, as it swept me along in its onward course. My weakness was strength in the tempest's hour, and my safety I found in the ocean's power. And here, if you would, might man discern a truth he is slow of heart to learn. He rears his will against the will of heaven, and his proudest plans are to fragments riven. Let him meekly yield to the sovereign sway that even the sea's proud waves obey, and though over life's ocean tempests roar, and wrecks are strewn over life's last shore, born like the shell on the billow's breast, he shall land in a haven of endless rest. 1858. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A tribute of sympathy to the defenders of Glen Linden by Reverend H. H. Dugmore. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. A tribute of sympathy to the defenders of Glen Linden. Away, 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 there are patriot voices calling. Glen Linden's band holds the foe in hand, though its watch worn sons are falling. Away to the mountain glen, where the war whoop wild is yelling, and the savage howls as he darkly scowls on the white man's flame wrapped dwelling there is life-blood reeking there where our slaughtered friends are lying not boldly slain on the battle plain but each by his hearthstone dying away 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 to horse to rifle springing while the widows sigh and the orphans cry in our ears in our hearts are ringing they were dwelling in peaceful vales nor fear nor danger knowing midst their flocks spread wide over the mountain side and milk and honey flowing the vine and the fig trees cheer the cornfields waving gladness the shearers throng and the reaper's song left cause nor room for sadness there was childhood's guileless glee there was maiden beauty blooming there was ripe old age with its wisdom sage and its honor life perfuming and there were thankful hearts for peace and plenty given the voice of prayer ascended there and the song of praise to heaven and where are they now ah where there are homeless orphans weeping the widow's wail is on the gale the sire in his gore lies sleeping and are there dastard souls whose homes these homes were shielding who can coldly read while their brothers bleed nor aid nor pity yielding brand coward on his brow right traitor on his bearing who views from afar our homestead war and basely shrinks from sharing to your arms to your arms away what cease from the strife no never till the neck of the foe to earth bent low we have conquered a peace forever reverend h h dugmore 1851 end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Section forty of Poetry of South Africa. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Colors of the First Twenty Fourth by Reverend H. H. Dugmore. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Colors of the First Twenty Fourth respectfully dedicated to the surviving officers and men of the regiment preserve the colours melville we stand here and to the end twas thus that pauline spoke on eisenlana's dark and fatal day firm and resolved his mien and calm his words though death was nigh him and he saw it the camp stormed by overwhelming myriads and the yells of savage victors ringing in his ears demon-like while they drowned the dying groans of hundreds sinking low beneath the stroke of the blood-reeking zulu assegai overwhelmed but not dishonoured they had fought as british soldiers fight tens against thousands till the last charge was spent and then cold steel grew hot in zulu's life-blood and in heaps their dying foes lay round them twas in vain hundreds had strewn the ground before their fire yet heedless of their fall had thousands more recklessly trampled them in onward rush and wild contempt of death as the surf breaks and strews with spray the shore wave urging wave blind to its leader's fate the zulu host rolls its dark waves its dead as yet unmissed with thousands in reserve to fill their place man after man the british soldier falls falls where he stood his right arm strength exhausted and his dead foes hurled on his bayonet's point to clear the way for others poulain saw his own end near and gave his dying charge preserve the colours let no savage hands stain the old honour of the twenty-fourth come death if come it must but not disgrace and melville took the colour sacred trust and bore it from the field one farewell grasp one mutual gaze and then they sadly part comrades in arms to meet on earth no more men of the twenty-fourth i stay with you we bide it to the end a ringing cheer shows the old fire unquenched and though no hope of succour nerves their arm they face the foe till men and their commander sink together and join in death their comrades gone before the fight is done the cannon's boom is stilled stilled is the rocket's rush the rifle's ring the yell of onslaught the defying cheer wails of the wounded and the dying groan rise on the breeze no longer nor the shrieks of hapless followers of the camp unarmed and slaughtered in their helplessness the spoils in savage triumph proudly borne away with battle song of victory upraised by myriad voices mongst the echoing hills are passing from the scene the hush of death has settled all around and gloomy night spreads her dark pall over the now silent field but where is melville how shall he escape leagues must he traverse of a hostile land ere he can safely place his sacred trust and scattered far and wide in headlong flight native contingents from the field of death urge their fear-stricken way with failing strength while ruthless foes red-handed strike them down on every side where where is he the guardian of his dead regiment's honour who shall say for be it that he fights his way alone horsemen or footmen through the host of foes or be it he evades their hot pursuit there crosses still his path and bars his way the river boundary in summer flood the swirling waters as they rush and roar mock at the wearied limbs that reach their banks and can no more although the foe is on them numbers die here numbers plunge in and drown dies melville too have any seen him fall or has he dared the river with his charge grasping the colour could he breast the flood or is he swept away alas none knows explore the river search its wooded banks men horses arms caught midst entangling branches may yield some relic of the lost one ah who lies here melville 
and who lies here coghill with melville side by side in death slain though the raging flood was braved and conquered slain though escaped the hot pursuit beyond slain in a mutual last attempt to save from the wild waters that than life more dear hard hard the fate wrecked when the port was gained shield we from vultures greed the sad remains by hasty cairn and breathe a hurried prayer tis all we can till worthier rights be paid but hark that shout the colour lo the colour snatched from the turbid waters drenched and torn but saved by friendly branches caught and held hark how the glen resounds cheer answers cheer and the wild rocks with rapturous echoes ring they are not twenty-fourth men who have found the prize and its dead guardians what of that they share a soldier's sympathies and feel the joy of brother soldiers as their own mark now the swift return while borne aloft the sacred emblem challenges from far the eager outlook ha tis seen tis seen the quick-eyed sentinel has caught it and there bursts the shout exultant from his lips the spark electric sets the camp on fire the colour lo the colour honour saved rush from all sides the eager throng to greet and welcome while with cheers the camp resounds and now once more in martial order stands the remnant of the regiment to receive and place in its old shrine the rescued treasure a guard of honour from the reverent hands of those who bear it take the precious pledge more precious for its perils and it rests dearer than ever in the regiment's heart melville and coghill twins in death your names belong to history on fame's bright scroll they stand already blazoned men from far shall visit as a shrine your hero grave and grey-haired veterans in after years shall tell their children how long long ago at eisenlana's deadly woe-fraught fight ye saved the honour of the twenty-fourth and died in saving it rev h h dagmore end of section forty should it be according to thy mind by w selwyn port elizabeth january twenty first eighteen seventy nine read for librivox dot org by larry wilson job thirty four thirty three shall feeble vain presumptuous man whose loftiest visions but a span impugn the vast mysterious plan by boundless wisdom laid shall his omnipotent behest that thunders o'er wild ocean's breast or lulls its surging waves to rest by puny worms be stayed shall man whose moments hurrying flee like sparklets from a phosphor sea prescribe to dread eternity the laws of his domain shall he who scans each circling pole and points the course the planets roll seek wisdom from the darkling mole to guide the shining train shall yon vast orb whose kindling ray pours forth the universal day his glad majestic progress stay lest haply his bright beams with light unwelcome should illume the drowsy couch and chide the gloom of some voluptuous sluggard's room and chase his idle dreams shall thirsty nature pant in vain for showers of life restoring rain shall desolation sweep the plain and beauty droop and die lest one bright drop's exultant spring should snap the spider's airy string or dim perchance the golden wing of some gay butterfly shall yon glad stream whose sparkling tide spreads verdant beauty far and wide or leap its banks and turn aside or in the desert sink lest haply fraught with summer showers its waves should ripple o'er the flowers by children planted mid the bowers that tangle on its brink no he whose power with life endued this glorious universe pursued in his design the highest good and happiness of all and still at his benign command rich bounties gladden every land and still he guides with all wise hand each tenant of this ball oh then low bending in the dust cling to his love with childlike trust 
believing that omniscience must know what for thee is best let resignation soothe thy cares let faith disperse thy gloomy fears and god himself shall dry thy tears in his eternal rest port elizabeth january twenty first eighteen seventy nine end of poem this recording is in the public domain Section 42 of Poetry of South Africa. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. In the Drought Lands of South Africa. The Rain. By Alex Wilmot. Read for LibriVox.org. By Trudy B. Voice. August 31st, Narragansett, Rhode Island in the drought lands of south africa the rain it was a land of rills of mountains kloofs and hills high peaks were westward eastward the great main a rich good land and free men lived in liberty worked and had quiet sleep and loved the rain thus was it for a time in this fair sunny clime flocks prospered prospered too the bearded grain there only was good cheer and farmers felt no fear when nature's lavish bounties fell in rain but there came a change clouds were few and strange the stored-up waters soon began to wane broken and weak all day the streamlets ceased to play the sun glared on with no sweet veil of rain and lo the land lay dry no moisture in the sky the steams dry sterile the once fertile plain and round the empty tank the ocean feebly sank alas why cometh not the wished-for rain the gentle animals whose fleeces give the means whereby the people hope to live lie down and die it seems that ne'er again life-giving showers shall fall in churches now they call o oh god in mercy send us down the rain all nature cries aloud o oh come life-giving cloud the flowers the grass all herbage green is slain the corpse-like earth is black skeletons form a track o'er regions mourning for the want of rain now has the joyful sight filled us with pure delight of fatness dropping from the clouds again from mountains to the sea one hymn of jubilee should thank the master who has sent the rain end of poem this recording is in the public domain the landing of the british settlers of eighteen twenty by alex wilmot read for librivox dot org by larry wilson written on occasion of the celebration of the settlers jubilee in grahamstown in eighteen seventy winds of the north blew cold with icy breath and parting seemed a sorrow like to death and fifty years ago our little band of british settlers left their native land they said farewell for ever ah farewell the friends the joys the land they love so well we never more shall stand on that dear english land nor view our native skies gone each familiar face of whose sweet loving grace dear memories rise spring shall come back again smiling on hill and plain we shall be gone our old homes will be gay with sunshine and the may from our hearts flown farewell dear land of birth farewell our native earth hill plain and river farewell each dearest friend may god all blessings send farewell for ever away they go midst mist and sudden gale o'er stormy seas through biscay's bay they sail the sun is covered by dark lowering cloud and heaven seems hidden in a dusky shroud hark the huge vessel felt the thundering stroke while whelming waves in sudden deluge broke the seas around for horrid vengeance rave 
and every yawning gulf now seems a grave again the storm is o'er with steady breeze they glide in safety upon summer seas whose azure surface as a mirror tries to catch the sunny radiance of the skies here gorgeous tinted sunsets come at even to show ten thousand gateways into heaven while gentle zephyrs on the ocean play and balmy night succeeds the heat of day the twinkling beacons show how far they roam no longer the pale pole star points our home the starry banners of the north are furled the southern cross shines on a southern world now soon with ecstasy they hear the cry land land in sight the land we can descry and now the longed-for shores before them rise with mountain peaks which fringe the azure skies tall beetling crags frown o'er the breakers roar whose white-tipped billows kiss a sandy shore tis Afric, land of mystery and fear of burning climate and of desert drear where the fierce lion and fiercer savage roam here is your born here is your future home supplies obtained within a western bay again they sally forth upon their way and round that cape which hid in misty forms towered o'er the ocean's verge the cape of storms whose dangerous diaz did not fear to cope and proved it to the world cape of good hope the oceans which this cape forever lave while time shall last is that great sailor's grave and nature's self proclaims his honors here by such a monument or such a bier along the coasts they sail with pleasured eyes they view new shores new hills new plains arise the cape st blaze and long Cluth mountains past and hoped for longed for haven comes at last then midst the glories of an april day they cast their anchor in algoa bay whose outstretched arms receive in their embrace those dauntless settlers of a northern race here first brave diaz stayed his ventrous sail first here sought refuge from wild western gale on a small isle when tempests ceased to toss planted faith's emblem there the holy cross religion's banner thus was first unfurled first reared within this savage southern world bare sand hills line a tract of barren coast no town or village can the seaport boast the vacant beach and bleak hillside show clear the work that waits the hardy pioneer o'er walls of surf they reach the welcome strand and the first british settlers touch the land upon this south sea strand unto this savage land welcome ye little band fit to brave danger losses and wars will be fires of adversity tests which you cannot flee trials and sorrow yours for success to fight yours to defend the right striving with all your might for life and freedom under benignant skies fruits on the plain shall rise as labor sacrifice to the creator herds flocks and trade shall be proof of your industry making prosperity smile upon labor sons of the great and free on let your motto be god and the right for me forward for ever why come they here amidst the desert's gloom to raise a nation from a lifeless tomb to bid fair plains the fruits of labor yield to tend the flock to plough the fertile field the wealth of commerce by success to gain to found a home where peace and plenty reign these are your tasks but oh with hardships drear with toils unnumbered you must labor here for blasted crops and floods and drought shall come and savage yells around your burning home on toilsome sand they wander up and down through numbrous tents which form a canvas town with curious eyes all view the motley throng huge wagons dragging their slow length along the wily bushman and the becuan the hottentot the boar the englishman here strange plants bloom beneath the southern sky and graceful aloes raise their blossoms high while prickly cacti and the feathery reed grow rank in common as the worthless weed and now they strike their tents all parties go they leave the sandy beach in wagons slow and cross the bushy plain and swart crops stream 
whose jungle-covered heights above them gleam o'er hills or plains they trek and through the kloof where the high rocky crags their paths o'er roof where brilliant birds and gorgeous flowers are seen screened by pavilions of perpetual green euphorbia raise their candelabra high and vivid bush o'er curtains half the sky north south east west the settlers scatter wide by stream by valley and by mountain side they raise rough homesteads and by labor strain soon see around them fields of smiling grain alas their labors vain too soon they view the crops unhealthy and of dusky hue gaunt famine stalks upon the treacherous soil and failures thrice renewed repay their toil behold dark discontent with angry frown upon their hills and valleys settles down again dawn rises out of horrid night relief has come and prospects are more bright they now successful in the arts of peace find like the argonauts a golden fleece but trials still more hard have yet to come with kaffir yell and sight of blazing home the kaffirs long have angry passions nursed and now the flames from smouldering embers burst must we still retreat from the haunts of man to the desert drear and the wild bushman where the lion and jackal are forced to flee with the wildebeest and orib ah no in foray and vengesome fight we will dare the invader's utmost might and from bushy ambush again shall fly our shaft of destruction the assegai the sky is lurid with a coming storm against the white man common cause they form their bands of hatred gather from afar and league together in a cruel war fierce treacherous faults in untamed freedom bold the kloof or bush was still the kafir's hold they sought not battle in open field but used the weapons cunning loves to wield to lie in wait to strike a sudden blow of ambushed vengeance on a dreaded foe with poisonous lies to sue for speedy peace to plot more murder in a brief release to pause to strike with double force the blow the flaming homesteads light them to their foe and women's screams for mercy drowned in blood cry out for vengeance to an angry god and foremost mingling in that awful strife the settlers fought for wife for child for life they see around them hideous signals rise the kafir's fiery cross illumes the midnight skies they rush from burning homes or die as brave men die with face unto the foe and hopes in god on high and then ye swarthy warriors then began unequal warfare with the strong white man the assegai is measured with the gun the gauge once taken up war is not done till hence's death and gwanga's gory tide and water kloof and many red hillside and burning huts and savage screams of woe have proved the prowess of your british foe three dreadful wars have kafir fierceness proved and thrice their vengeance sought the white man's blood while thrice their warriors have been taught to know how vain their battle against such a foe sir harry smith's and cathcart's names rank high with those renowned in english chivalry and many a nameless kloof's mimosas wave o'er the brave british soldier's grave and bowker's southey's curry's name shall be with those of others kept in memor queenstown and craddock's volunteers lay down their warlike weapons while king williamstown rests on his arms by the buffalo's side and starts new commerce on east london's tide the settler city in success has grown and busy commerce smiles on grahamstown and port elizabeth their landing place still striding onward in progressive race makes commerce speed its sails from algoa bay and sends new products o'er the watery way and far and near the bustling towns arise planted and nursed by settlers enterprise to god almighty let us thanks upraise to him all glory to him endless praise now fifty years have passed here is the field of dauntless energy and this the yield 
their advent here we celebrate in days which well can speak the british settlers praise their glory with their memory is blent the eastern province is their monument end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the country of mankaran by alexander wilmot north of the vol river december eighteen eighty two read for librivox dot org by nemo ah sad are our hearts our souls full of trouble ruin's harvest is come we are left as the stubble the white man is here for our fields and our cattle no hope is now left us no chance in the battle we look on like men who are used to disaster and see ruin's night falling faster and faster or like animals struck by the swift assegai we are sentenced to death we have only to die from limpopo to val has the mandate been given from his veld in his home must the black man be driven from the homes of our youth which our eyes love to scan we are forced from the crawls of our chief mankaran we starve in the veld so blooming and verdant the invader is lord the owner his servant christianity low to your justice we fly protect us at once or we perish and die end a poem this recording is in the public domain drink by alex wilmot read for LibriVox.org. drink behold the moloch of our pagan days the bacchic god whom all his votaries praise for io bacchus is a modern hymn chanted in praise of drink its festive din the god is worshipped here in our own days enshrined in radiance midst the hotel's blaze or where the drink shop with its beaming light attracts the moth-like worshippers at night the sacrificial victims never fail with gait unsteady and with features pale still they come on nor sex nor age is spared recruits by thousands easily are snared here comes the husband with unsteady tread and offers up for drink his children's bread his weary wife soon learns to follow in and drown her wretchedness in draughts of gin the starving children outcast and forlorn from virtue's path at once are quickly torn hence from this nursery of sin and grief we get the outcast woman and cunning thief and the first lessons of the murderer's sin are taught in brawls amidst the tavern's din moloch of drink to thee are offered still youth beauty fortune science art and skill thousands of votaries drink thy poisoned cup and health strength life are freely offered up in thy fell service life-blood still is poured in new libations neither plague nor sword obtains its victim in the town or field in such abundance as thy altars yield the cheerful cup the drinking cup goes round convivial spirits gladly hail the sound see here in wretched misery crawls along the shadow of a man once hale and strong at one time wealthy held in high esteem he loved and was beloved his upright mind told of an upright heart till drink stepped in and all the train of curses followed sin then farewell heaven and friends and peaceful life and welcome squalor penury and strife his once loved partner learns from him to shrink her life a martyrdom her murderer drink his son and daughter god in heaven to be the cause of such great crime and misery the girl an outcast walks the midnight street the boy skulks trembling for policemen's feet 
In festive houses, festive cups go round. Widows and orphans shudder at the sound. A death knell tolls in every drinking song. To some most heedless midst the drinking throng. Ah, well, when the nations suffer, it is well to wreath with flowers the portal of their hell. When tens of thousands perish by the cup, for neighbor's sake, for God's sake, give it up. Its use is lawful, let its disuse be heaven's key for thee and thousands, charity. Not blasting fire from heaven so surely kills as burning draughts which flow from Bacchic rills. See nations fall as oaks by lightning stroke, their glories rivened and their manhood broke. Britain, the Kaffirs, curse before they die, the cup, their poison, and thy infamy. In Afric's land are riveted new chains, and freedom flies when drunkenness remains. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. South Africa, read Aviva. Bright land which stretchest down through southern seas, on which the sun loves well to look. South Africa, thou now hast wakened, and the stirring breeze which comes from the northward fills thee with a soul. Arise, throw off thy shackles, and advance. Among the nations claim thy place and live. The time has come to shake off thy dull sleep of slavery and apathy. Thou wast made to be a home for millions of the brave and free. For God has blessed thee with a dower of wealth, of tree, of herb, of pasture, and of field. Thy children laugh aloud in jocund health, and all things men require thy plains can yield. At faintest knock thy mountain portals ope, revealing treasure glimpses fair to see, rich diamonds, metals, ay, imperial gold, are in the dower which God hath given thee. Arise, ye lotus-eaters of the south, and know the plenteous blessings which from labour flow, as men have reaped great Europe, pouring down from Scandinavia and far Baltic's wave, so must our future too be reaped. Now sown, the crops will grow above this era's grave. South Africa calls aloud to Europe, filled with overflowing energy and youth. Come in your thousands, work as your fathers willed, with strength, with power, with energy and truth. Good hope will turn to hope at last fulfilled, and Southern Africa be great as God has willed. Alexander Wilmot. This, the end of the poem. This recording is in the public domain. Read by Trudy B. Voice, Narragansett, Rhode Island, July 7th, 2017. The Beautiful Island of Dreams by Alex Wilmot Read for LibriVox.org by Trudy B. Voice May 16th, 2017, Narragansett, Rhode Island TrudyBVoice.com They come, the shapes of joy and woe, The airy crowds of long ago, The dreams and fancies known of yore That have been and shall be no more. They change the cloisters of the night into a garden of delight. Golden Legend When sorrow's dull clouds o'ershadow the soul and the sunshine of life is concealed, when the waves of misfortune still over us roll, there is sometimes a refuge and shield. In a calm little harbour lit up by its sun with genial though transient beams, tis hailed as a shelter where'er it is won, the beautiful island of dreams. When pursued by avenging demons of hate, the wretched oft pause in their path, and find a retreat and a respite from fate, a brief lull in the tempest of wrath. In the fair fairy bowers where in shadowy light illusion reality seems, 
whose oceans are bridged by the visions of night, the beautiful island of dreams. And still in this desert, as onward we roam, on a dull and a desolate track, fast journeying on to eternity's home, we sometimes in dreamland look back, and in slumber behold the dear friends that have gone, and the past or the future now seems rich with memory or hope to that oasis flows, the beautiful island of dreams. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Cape of Good Hope. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Cape of Good Hope by William Roger Thompson. Utrecht, 1856. Read for LibriVox.org by Trudy B. Voice. July 6, 2017. Narragansett, Rhode Island. Cape of Good Hope. There is a land unknown to fame, a land whose heroes have no name in the gray records of past age, unchronicled in history's page, untamed by art, yet wild and free. That land lies in the southern sea. It laughs to heaven which smiles on it, there midway in wild waters set, with sun serene and balmier breeze than ever swept these northern seas. Its beetling crags rise vast, and war, with oceans meeting from afar, to break their billows on its shore, with fearful never-ending roar. Bold mariners who sailed of old through unknown seas in search of gold saw those dark rocks, those giant forms, and, fear quelled, named them Cape of Storms. O oh, land of storms, I pine to hear that music which made others fear, I long to see thy storm-fiend scowl, I long to hear the fierce winds howl, hot with fell fires across thy plains. Thou glorious land, where nature reigns supreme and awful loveliness, O oh, shall thy exiled son not bless those hills and dales of thine, where first he roamed a careless child, where burst thy tropic splendor on his eye, where days were spent whose memories lie deep neath all afterthought and care, yet rise more buoyant than the air, and float o'er all his days. O home of beauty rare, where I did roam in childhood's golden days, my prayer for thee soars through this northern air. Land of good hope, thy future lies bright for my vision as thy skies. O Africa, Long lost in night, upon the horizon gleams the light of breaking dawn. Thy star of fame shall rise and brightly gleam. Thy name shall blaze on history's later page. Thy birth time is the last great age. Thy name has been slave of the world. But when thy banner is unfurled, triumphant liberty shall wave that standard o'er foul slavery's grave. And earth, decaying earth, shall see her freest, fairest child in thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Good Hope by William Roger Thompson Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. Good hope for this good land yet, If we would but dare and do, If we would but stand with ready hand, to grasp ere the blessings go. Good hope for this good land yet, if we would but stay life's dreams, which will past us flow while we, too slow, stand wrapped on the bank in dreams. Good hope for this good land yet, if we would but cease to hope that the rain will drop and bring a crop while we idly sit and mope. Good hope for this good land yet, if we work e'en while we wait. For the sun and rain to ripen grain we have sown, then left to fate. Good hope for this good land yet, if we use each heaven-sent gift as a means to an end and do not spend our best without care and thrift. 
good hope for this good land yet, if we live and struggle still, to a better life through toil and strife, with a stout heart and strong will. Good hope for this good land yet, if our faith be active trust, and not blind belief, which at each grief still mourns that what must be must. Good hope for this good land yet, if we would but trust in God, and the Christ who came and took our name to bless, not to turn the sod. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ode by E. B. Watermeer, read for LibriVox.org by Ryan Barber. No ivory, no golden ceiling adorns my modest home. No marble pillars, wealth revealing, proudly support the dome. No regal fortune, princely dwelling, hath fate vouchsafed to me. I am not clad in state excelling, in robe of sovereignty. A vein of wit by nature's blessing, an honest heart are mine. Yet me to honour, nought possessing, the wealthiest incline. Why should I then the gods importune to add unto my store? Contented with my humble fortune, I could not wish for more. Day hastes to follow day, and truly new moons but come to die. The tomb awaits thy ashes duly, mid all thy pageantry. Yet mindless of the fatal hour, on high thou built the hall. Insatiate with thy wealth and power, thou fain would seize on all. Thy neighbour's farm, thy neighbour's dwelling, all wouldst thou have for thee. Gainst justice and gainst law rebelling, with base cupidity. While from their home unjustly driven, the husband and the wife, the babes exposed to winds of heaven, must linger out their life. But one sure homestead there remaineth, than all on earth more sure, the dark abode where Orcus reigneth, alike o'er rich and poor. Just earth entombeth even the poorest, with sons of royalty, and Sharon thou in vain allurest, for gold to set it free. Great kings renowned in ancient story, he holdeth in his might, Far famed of old for warlike glory, now doomed to endless night. Invoked in pity he hath risen, and uninvoked to free. The hapless poor from their earth prison, and grant them liberty. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. After a Storm by E.B. Watermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Morning has come upon us from the day Has rolled each darkling cloud The orient view Unveils with gorgeous sun in deep clear blue But ocean riots still in ponderous play Thousands of heavy surges plunge away Dazzling with snow-white foam Or swiftly woos iris to paint all brightly tinted hues Strangely fair magic, mid their shivered spray. Around us, many a little whale-bird skims, Dipping its tiny bosom in the deep, Then instantly uprises, blithe and high, Even as the heart unthralled by earthly things, Will walk this troubled earth, yet ever keep Its dearest home up in the azure sky. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Amap and Grit by S. A. M. Read for LibriVox.org by Dini Stein from Kelowna, Canada. Amap and Grit A Legend of the Nosop On a huge rock of granite stone, a dark-skinned maiden stands alone. Her eyes with vengeance gleam. Twas in a wild and savage glen, far from the busy haunts of men, where Nossop rolls its stream. And who is she? What does she here, alone beside by the lion's lair? Has she no woman's fear? She had, but all that fear is gone. 
she stands upon that very stone because she knows he's near dark-skinned maiden come away tempt not thus the beast of prey haste haste your life to save no no the dark-skinned maiden cried he tore my arm up from my side and vengeance i will have a white man stood behind a tree a double-barreled gun had he and steady was his aim she knew not that his help was nigh but lightly poised the assegai when forth the lion came he sees her with a single bound he strove to reach the vantage ground but ere the rock he gained the dark-skinned maiden's aim was true downwards the fearful weapon flew and in his side remained he fell and writhing in his pain madly he strove but strove in vain to rise upon his feet ah ah the dark-skinned maiden cried this day i was to be his bride he tore my arm up from my side ah ah revenge is sweet beneath that rock of granite stone on which the white man stands alone the lion writhes in pain the dark-skinned maiden is at his side she drew a dirk her amap's pride he never rose again some month had rolled away and then within that very lion's den were found the bones of Hrit. and to this day who ventures nigh that granite rock will hear the cry ah ah revenge is sweet but visitors are very rare the native seldom ventures there he rather turns aside and why because he fears to meet the wandering ghost of faithful Hrit with amap at her side s a m end of poem this recording is in the public domain Section 53 of Poetry of South Africa. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Sonnets of the Cape by G. Longmore. Read for LibriVox.org by Trudy B. Voice, August 31st, Narragansett, Rhode Island. Sonnets of the Cape. 1. Government Gardens, Cape Town. Oft, when my feet at evening homeward tread, the stately cloisters of the oaks along, my fervent soul breaks into grateful song, and I, a glad, rapt worshipper, am led. God, what a glorious prospect is outspread! Impersoned nature here hath built her shrine, on yon great altar sacrifice divine she offers to her Maker on the head of the majestic peak upon the west her favoured seat at eve oft sitteth she soothing the busy city into rest whilst the sun setting lights the golden sea here in thy fain bright presence i divest my heart of lower thoughts and bow to heaven and thee two night dost thou not love o angel of the night above all others this fair southern land for thou hast gemmed its skies with lavished hand with rarest stars and constellations bright shines not its vestal moon with purer light hath not its galaxy more lustrous hue while star clouds set in heavens more deeply blue still gladden airs as erst magellan's sight O oh, would that while the old grey mountains sleep there might be silence in the which to find grand music but if joyous creatures keep perpetual chorus shall my captious mind object creation's harmonies lie deep but to the soul attuned the parts are well combined end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Faded Photograph by G. Longmore, Cape Town, February 1862. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. 
Read for LibriVox.org by Trudy B. Voice, July 6, 2017, Narragansett, Rhode Island. The Faded Photograph To my friend David C., Bath, Somersetshire. Your portrait hangs upon my wall, among my treasures highly classed, for it is potent to recall old days that we have passed in close communion, heart and mind, where Avon's placid waters wind. And very often, as I gaze, Bath's noble hills with you I climb, or tread the valley's wooded ways where we've roved many a time, delightful scenes that I would fain, before I sleep, behold again. Our cape its beauties hath, tis true, old table mountains always grand. Our sun is bright, our sky is blue, the Maker's bounteous hand, from which all beauty hath its birth, made this far corner of his earth. Yet must a Briton love his home, the more for absence, as I ween, and greatly do I long to roam through daisied meadows green, perchance made dulcet by the swell of distant chiming village bell. Oh, for a field of new-mown hay, a beech or elm or tasselled birch, a springtide scent of virgin may, or a glimpse of an ivied church, to tramp the stubbles of the corn upon a fresh September morn, to tread once more with gladsome feet the thronging street, the busy mart, to feel again the mighty best of England's wondrous heart. But though I long, I murmur not, for heaven appoints each human lot. You know not how we exiles prize this modern photographic art, portraying to our grateful eyes, exact in every part, kindred and friends forever dear, we gaze and almost think you hear. Your picture's somewhat faded now, but to fond memory it shows your very self. Oft mark I how you wear your homely clothes. You know what one professor teaches, and I have faith in what he preaches. And oft I sit by your fireside and share your daily household life. Upon my knees the youngsters ride, or I chat with your blue-eyed wife. Give them my love and tell them, pray, not to forget me far away. Let time and age do all they can, and let it fade if fade it will. This portrait of a sterling man shall grace my chamber still, and I its dimmest lines shall trace until I meet him face to face. G. Longmore, Cape Town, February 1862 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Eveline. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Eveline by C.P.M. Mozambique Channel, November 1861. Read for LibriVox.org by Trudy B. Voice. July 6, 2017. Narragansett, Rhode Island. Eveline, my own girl at home, weep no longer for me. The ship steps through the ocean foam that bears me back to thee. Full sail and bending mast, we cleave the waters green. I'm hasting home to thee at last, my own Eveline. I have o'ercome the fate that parted us so long. I have o'erpassed the treacherous hate, forgot the rankling wrong. I am speeding o'er the sea, they swore should roll between the one who loves thee well, and thee, my own Eveline. Of you how many a night I've dreamed the long watch through, from noon's brain-searing shafts of light, my thoughts have flown to you, to you in your own home bowers, where the light falls cool and green, my saint of saints, my flower of flowers, my own Eveline. But now no longer pine, no longer wait and weep. Our pennant floats far o'er the brine. We march along the deep, 
with store of royal gold with silks of sunny sheen and bridal raiment meet to fold my own eveline an hour and he shall trace the old home scene once more but to have seen his true love's face white as the shroud she wore o oh, fading human love o oh, light in darkness seen o oh, voiceless as the stone above thy grave eveline end of poem this recording is in the public domain farewell to madeira by john sterling read for LibriVox.org by nemo hark hear the billow swell bright madeira fare thee well shining mountains azure skies sunniest hearts and friendliest eyes all my soul has felt so long like a joyous flow of song sinks at vespers distant bell loved madeira fare thee well summer island now no more shall i move along thy shore where in all thy waves i caught oracles of peaceful thought mid thy glittering walls and towers girt by vines and gay with flowers oft in sleep shall fancy dwell loved madeira fare thee well rock-built isle whose mountains rude are the throne of solitude where from giant crag and steep i have gazed on valleys deep feeling powers within me pass from each stern aerial mass land of lovely peak and dell loved madeira fare thee well far within the cares of life hushed beyond the sound of strife where methinks thy spirits call from thy soothing waterfall off shalt thy remembrance be quiet strength and joy to me brighten memory's dusky cell loved madeira fare thee well from the heights of time and toil where i stand on heavenly soil far around discerning clear many a various land and year most the vision seems to smile warmed by the hesperian isle round thee floats a sunny spell while i murmur fare thee well often magic lures me far toward the east familiar star older powers with earlier sway chanting call me hence away and i hear above thy foam trembling round the voice of home whispering more than tongue can tell yet madeira fare thee well on thee still may summer breathe still thy crown with blossoms wreathe and may still with peace divine more of noblest life be thine making hearts of kindliest mould earnest glad serene and bold so supreme all ill to quell god fair island keep thee well end of poem this recording is in the public domain farewell to fifty five by william selvin read for librivox dot org by sonia farewell to fifty five farewell farewell old fifty five to thee this circling ball no longer homage yields thy records closed and frail humanity stands trembling neath the rod that conscience wields for now methinks that record's page reveals a long dark roll of follies faults and crimes before his eyes whose love in vain appeals to hearts ingrate whose goodness glads our times and spreads with genial gifts the wide earth's very climes upon thy winged hour old fifty-five alternate hopes and fears have trembling hung capricious as the fleecy clouds which drive athwart the summer sky 
a motley throng of joys and griefs has swiftly swept along now over the welkin peal the bridal bells anon the mournful funeral dirge is sung big with this truth each passing moment swells beyond the sky alone unchanging pleasure dwells farewell old fifty five the visions fair which down thy sparkling vista erst appeared beguiling mammon's votaries with the glare of sordid wealth in pile on pile upreared have flitted past and left a blank uncheered by one bright gleam in many an aching breast o oh, were the sober truth more wide revered and gaping folly's golden dreams repressed how few would groan beneath the gambler's dark unrest few were our tears old fifty-five hadst thou consigned alone the noisome vampire band to disappointment blank and carking woe but thou with undiscriminating hand hast flung on poverty's inclement strand full many a one styled noblest work of god his lowing herds have perished from the land or haply over his fields a blight has trod still he can trusting say my father holds the rod farewell old fifty-five bright over thy days celestial truth has flung her radiant bow benignant from her throne she stoops to raise each moiling slave of ignorance and woe her silvery voice proclaims to high and low this blood-bought truth man's mind and tongue are free may every human breast responsive glow till superstition pride and bigotry their lofty heads abase and like grim spectres flee farewell old fifty-five in human war with blood-red hand has over thy cycle swept horrific still he rolls his thundering car mid ghastly wounds and dying groans unwept the cannon's roar which long in silence slept unceasing echoes over the dismal scene deep blushing mercy from her throne has stepped while eager rapine stalks with hideous mien and gloating scans the flaming city's lurid sheen o liberty britannia's proudest boast o liberty man's brightest heritage why on thy steps attendant should a host of sanguinary passions fiercely rage or why should history's memorable page be blotted over with sighs and groans and tears when will grey time mature the golden age when men shall snap their swords and quivering spears and peace triumphant reign over all the circling years farewell old fifty-five as lingering still thy last faint echoes on the ear expire and saddening thoughts the heaving bosom fill hope strings anew her animating lyre eternal truth the soul's immortal fire ere long shall claim the homage of the world high over gaunt slavery's blazing funeral pyre shall freedom's crimson banner wave unfurled and ignorance and vice from their dark thrones be hurled william selvin port elizabeth january first eighteen fifty six end of poem this recording is in the public domain lead kindly light by w selvin read for librivox dot org by larry wilson a little earthen lamp seventeen hundred years old was recently found in the east which bore this inscription the light of christ shines for all christian express december first eighteen seventy eight this tiny lamp of fragile clay once shed its faint and flickering ray to cheer perchance some sage's hall its light extinct mid wreck it lies through seventeen rolling centuries till disentombed behold the truth bright with the glow of pristine youth the light of christ shines for us all hail glorious truth thy music thrills and echoes from time's distant hills and still thy tones melodious fall still may poor wanderers lift their heads to him whose face benignant sheds effulgent rays to warm and cheer to waken hope and banish fear 
the light of christ still shines for all the ice-built screens by bigots planned as children's barriers in the sand dashed by the wild waves sink and fall melt in the beams from jesus face exhale in mist and leave no trace free as the breeze on mountainside wide as the ocean's rolling tide the light of christ still shines for all light light for afric's dusky throng light for the prisoners held so long in superstition's blinding thrall light for the savage and the sage for smiling youth and trembling age light for all sorrowing sin-struck eyes that seek the pathway to the skies the light of christ still shines for all port elizabeth december eleventh eighteen seventy eight end of poem this recording is in the public domain should it be according to thy mind by w selwyn port elizabeth january twenty first eighteen seventy nine Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Job 34, 33. Shall feeble, vain, presumptuous man, whose loftiest visions but a span, impugn the vast, mysterious plan by boundless wisdom laid? Shall his omnipotent behest, that thunders o'er wild ocean's breast, or lulls its surging waves to rest, by puny worms be stayed? shall man whose moments hurrying flee like sparklets from a phosphor sea prescribe to dread eternity the laws of his domain shall he who scans each circling pole and points the course the planets roll seek wisdom from the darkling mole to guide the shining train shall yon vast orb whose kindling ray pours forth the universal day his glad majestic progress stay lest haply his bright beams with light unwelcome should illume the drowsy couch and chide the gloom of some voluptuous sluggard's room and chase his idle dreams shall thirsty nature pant in vain for showers of life restoring rain shall desolation sweep the plain and beauty droop and die lest one bright drop's exultant spring should snap the spider's airy string or dim perchance the golden wing of some gay butterfly shall yon glad stream whose sparkling tide spreads verdant beauty far and wide or leap its banks and turn aside or in the desert sink lest haply fraught with summer showers its waves should ripple o'er the flowers by children planted mid the bowers that tangle on its brink no he whose power with life endued this glorious universe pursued in his design the highest good and happiness of all and still at his benign command rich bounties gladden every land and still he guides with all wise hand each tenant of this ball oh then low bending in the dust cling to his love with childlike trust believing that omniscience must know what for thee is best let resignation soothe thy cares let faith disperse thy gloomy fears and god himself shall dry thy tears in his eternal rest End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Hrafrenet by W. Selwyn, Hrafrenet, 1860. Read for LibriVox.org by Sandy Ferrer. Hail, gem of the desert, in slumber reposing, the dark hills thy cradle, soft verdure thy bed. The breeze from the clough richest perfumes disclosing lightly sweeps o'er thy bosom, raising dust very red. The last gleams of the sun in gay splendour descending seem fondly to linger around the tall spire, while the clouds, rainbow tinted, their gorgeous hues lending, make the Dutchman's black chimneys seem as if all afire. Deep bosomed in shade, the dark river meanders, save where like a mirror it gleams from the glade. Or soapy and slimy through mud holes it wanders, where stockings are washed by a hottentot maid. Sweet abode of contentment, dearly loved Grafrenet, long, long mayst thou bask in thy slumber profound. Tame springbucks be baited for a sixpenny bit, 
and thy butter be sold at four shillings per pound. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hymn by William Selwyn, written during the Zulu War. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John twelve thirty two. O Saviour throned in peace above, reveal thy pierced side, and let the vision of thy love stay war's remorseless tide. Risen Saviour, hear, for white, for black alike didst thou low bow thy fainting head. For all of every clime and hue didst thou thy heart's blood shed, suffering Saviour, hear. Behold fair Afric's sunny lands, with reeking carnage strewed. See God made man with rigid hands, in brother's blood imbrued. Sorrowing Saviour, hear. O oh, hear the Britain's dying groan, the Zulu's piercing wail. O oh, hear the famished orphan's moan, the widow's sobbing tale. Pitying Saviour, hear. In mercy stay the quivering spear, avert the death-winged ball. Pour balm on every scalding tear, and breathe thy peace o'er all. Mighty Saviour, hear. Draw weary warriors round thy feet by love's constraining cord. There let the scattered nations meet, and hail thee, Sovereign Lord. Gracious Saviour, hear. Port Elizabeth, February ninth, 1879 End the poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lament by William Selwyn, read for LibriVox.org by J. L. Baldwin, of the gutter lately filled up by an unpoetical municipality. Old residents of Port Elizabeth will remember the kloof running down between Duncan Street and Constitution Hill, which was spanned by a rude wooden footbridge just opposite Dr. Edward's residence. The kloof having been filled up now forms the site of the row of houses on the right-hand side of Duncan Street. This municipal improvement forms the subject of the following pitiful lament. Whatever may be thought of the merit of the verses, the author takes some credit for an eye to the practical, for the attempt to lead off the surface water through an underground culvert resulted in the catastrophe predicted in the concluding verses within a very short time after the completion of the work. O oh, list, good folks, a tale of woe, a tale of dark oppression. Let briny tears your cheeks down flow in sorrowful procession till late i trickled down the glen in sunbeams gaily sparkling but now entombed by heartless men i creep on cold and darkling beneath a huge chaotic mass of rubbish vile i mutter mid frogs and fungi rank alas a melancholy gutter no more my channel decked with green relieves the eye aweary its verdant slopes no more are seen but all around is dreary no more the breeze with fitful sigh along my bed breathes mildly no more when boreas blusters high my caverns echo wildly the rustic bridge that bound my banks in brotherhood together is torn away and its rude planks are gone the board knows whither away a dire revenge i'll brew my rage meanwhile i'll bung tight that sordid board the day shall rue when next i see the sunlight when turbid torrents rushing pass adown my peeping square holes, right through this execrable mass, I, madman-like, will tear holes. I'll heave aloft the lumbering load, and crashing down I'll toss it, till in the middle of the road I make a fixed deposit. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Salted Steed by A. Broderick Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. Oh, give me back my salted steed. They said he would not die. They said of stable I'd no need, but told a dreadful lie. I let him out one moonlit night. Upon the grass he fed. And in the morning, cruel sight, my salted steed was dead. I bought him with a good above ice and fought to get my geld, so wrote a letter in a trice, and sent it through the veld. But when the man who sold him came and opened his inside, he said the papias were to blame, 
and that was how he died. I've had a dozen steeds or more since that eventful day, but no more salted ones, be sure, that sort of thing don't pay. For if a charger's worth a sou, he's worth his feed, I swear, and should he live, I laugh, don't you, and should he die, don't care. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Romance from the Fields by C.F. Overton, read for LibriVox.org by Shanna Burns. How be I getting along, sir? Why, thank ye, I can't complain. The taties and crops look splendid, since we got that there last rain. The cattle and birds does middling, the misses and children's well, and the future looks bright and cheery, so far as I can tell. I look like a Dutchman, do I, with them feathers in my hat? Well, perhaps they're a trifle gaudy, but I'll wear em spite of that. My talisman I calls em for, they came of a wondrous bird, that completely changed our fortunes, tis the strangest tale you've heard. Afore you left for England, you may mind I went to the fields, was nigh played out with farming, and read of the thumping yields. Them diamond claims was giving, so resolved my luck to try. The drought and cruel lungsick had bothered us proper lie. I got what I could together, and we started right ahead, Mrs. and me and Bill here, with two little girls as is dead. I didn't do much at digging, but money could then be earned by any willing fellow who to work in earnest turned. Wages was high and I prospered, till fever came to the place, and I was unable to work, sir, and our children drooped apace. Twas a sad time, I can tell you, and off should we have starved. But a neighbour he'd been a sailor, his substance with us halved. Good, I should say, that he was good, a thorough kind-hearted brick. Poor fellow before very long, though. He himself fell sorely sick. My wife did all she could, kind soul, and nursed him night and day, but with me and the children poorly, she'd a hardish part to play. Poor Jim didn't get no better, and it seems made up his mind, as how he must die at the field, sir, and all he'd to leave behind. Would quit to my missus who always had been his kindest friend, t'wasn't much for things were dear then, and his coin had come to an end. Well, all there was he made over, then poor Jim was laid to rest. We got his watch and knick-knacks, but what the wife liked best was a couple of dorking hens, sir, and a fine young Spanish cock. Quite right, sir, them's the feathers, that I fear give you a shock. The missus was fond of poultry, and was pleased with what we'd got, but hunger is hard to bear, sir, so the birds came to the pot. Our little girls lay a-dying, and food we all must have. So one by one the fowls were killed, but our bairns we could not save. The young cock's turn came last but, to kill him we all were loth. But Billy and me in the fever lay, so the wife made us some broth. And now was the strangest thing for when that bird was drawn his crop. Contained, well, guess I assure you, my wife was fit to drop. A diamond, yes, a brilliant, without a fault or flaw, as good a gem for its size, you know, as ever a merchant saw. Four hundred pounds we sold it for, and we bought shares in a claim, that doubled soon the sum we had, don't that bird deserve some fame? Thank God the fever left us, little Billy was the first to mend, and after a while I got stronger, and could to work attend, but we'd all had enough of the field, sir, and longed to come back home, to settle down in the dear old place, nor want again to roam. I look like a Dutchman, do I? Well, all that we have we owe to that young bird, I reckon, and my gratitude I shall show. I shall sport his blue-black plumes then, for it does not off betide. When killing a fowl to cook, you find a plum in his inside. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.